Hello and welcome to the Get Sustainable show produced by ESPN in partnership with Green Europe Today and Livestream Studio. My guest today is Mr. Oskar Kulik, sustainable development expert at the Polish division of the banking giant BNP Paribas Bank. Oskar, thank you very much for being on our show today. I can't wait to hear uh, about everything that's going on in the world of banking, finance and investments. Yeah, sure. I'm uh, happy to, uh, to provide some insight on how we see sustainable development and uh, sustainable finance and its development uh, in the last few years. So. Um, Oscar, the, the war in Ukraine has dramatically changed the global trading conditions and has placed an ever more urgency on subjects related to energy independence, responsible use of natural resources and in society in general. We have become, I think, more aware, more united and clear uh, of what type of future we are all striving for um, and the risks involved in, in being complacent. So perhaps if you could start off by telling us um, how the, the war and its aftermath affected business operations in, in Bern per Paribas um, in terms of the ESG activity. Okay, so uh, maybe to start, uh, I believe that uh, this time uh, when uh, uh, of the of this invasion, uh, the ESG aspects are more, let's say, prominent and more visible as ever as ever before. Uh, one example is uh, not only the acceleration of uh, our thinking, geostrategic thinking about uh, the importance of uh, of uh, getting uh, independent from uh, in the imports of uh, fossil fuels, but also uh, the aspect of governance, uh, the uh, let's say the operations, the uh, the uh, ethics uh, towards uh, this uh, this conflict really shows also the G letter of yeah. the ESG uh, abbreviation, and uh, I believe that uh, that uh, especially going back to this uh, uh, fossil fuel independence, uh, we believe that uh, the direction uh, set, for instance, by the European Commission in the last few weeks that really uh, pushes towards an acceleration of these uh, policies uh, on decarbonizing the uh, economy as soon as possible and also without getting dependent on uh, imported fossil fuels, notably from uh, Russia. This is uh, something that we support and uh, we hope that uh, with our financial tools, because that's uh, finally our, our, our uh, goal in the economy to, to finance uh, this uh, transition, we will be able to uh, let's say contribute uh, to this, and I'm happy to elaborate on that. If you I like. think uh, it contribute is a small word. I think you're going to drive it forward and and yeah. and uh, and, and uh, keep the speed uh, of of this transi transition. Um, now, changes taking place in business across the globe are happening as a result of just not only regulatory regulatory changes, uh, but also due to growing consumer awareness of climate issues and um, higher customer client expectations and also indirectly often as cost cutting uh, mm. measures. Sure. Um, now we all know that transitioning to renewable energy sources and closed loop solutions often make financial sense as well. So what role can uh, banks and financial institutions like yours play in driving these changes? Mm -hmm. So uh, we perceive uh, our clients uh, in this whole, uh, let's say, ESG and uh, sustainability challenge and uh, opportunity as well uh, in a few perspectives. So uh, one is certainly what you already mentioned, the competitive position of a company. Mm -hmm. So we truly believe that uh, uh, the position of our clients uh, can be uh, can be enhanced by uh, really, let's say, getting into the green uh, direction in the way of uh, not only being, uh, let's say, more future-proof in their strategic thinking, but also just on a very practical basis being uh, prepared for the 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 more and more uh, the higher. Uh, let's say, importance of uh, making the supply chains, the global supply chains more green and that, let's yeah. say, large Western uh, companies are looking also uh, how their suppliers are uh, responding to, to the growing importance of ESG aspects. So this is something that we really raised during meetings with uh, our uh, also small and medium enterprises that uh, we are presenting that it is a very uh, wise decision and that we are happy to contribute to it with uh, not only financial tools but also with some, let's say, assist yeah. on uh, how to undertake such a transition to get uh, 
uh, also ratings in order to be you know more compliant with uh, what is happening around the world and uh, obviously the regulatory part is also playing a role and uh, growing uh, growing awareness of uh, of uh, consumers especially in this uh, more uh, and these products related more to the to the consumer uh, consumables yeah. that that we use on a daily basis then uh, we can see that maybe not so to such an extent in Poland yet but uh, certainly on Western European yeah. markets that uh, this is it's getting more important. So, so what you're saying is you, you, you're not just um, focused on providing lending services, but also helping guide companies through this transition and leading them um, in the, in the, on the, onto the path that they should be taking. So uh, obviously we are not a consultancy firm, but yeah. uh, what we do uh, uh, stress during our, uh, these meetings is not only showing, let's say, the product that yeah. we offer, but also really present the context and trying to, to let's say, uh, mm, influence to really uh, present uh, on uh, how we can uh, how we can work together and why this is important. So it's not just you know some idea from Brussels that that we need to implement, but we truly believe that. Uh, uh, getting into a sustainable, uh, to a more sustainable pathway, or speaking uh, it out uh, specifically, a net zero pathway mm -hmm. is uh, something to that is uh, that is the right thing to do for every company, and uh, also including this into the strategy uh, the into the strategy of a company. And I think that uh, we are a good example uh, of our that uh, our new strategy is uh, specifically including, uh, let's say, the sustainability challenges into the, uh, let's say, systemic changes that are needed within our company. Uh, yeah. So uh, we do not perceive this as a, as a, some uh, some entities for some time showed CSR, sometimes as yeah. really something next to the cr critical operations, the, the core business, but we are really uh, doing our best and in the next few years we will uh, further enhance this to uh, make uh, sustainable uh, products, but also sustainability linked uh, products like sustainability linked loans or green loans mm -hmm. or uh, specifically uh, green bonds as well in the, in the, in the, in the uh, sector of uh, real estate that uh, to make them you know an interesting product and uh, having uh, some value added beyond uh, just uh, the financial let's say uh, aspects of it. Um, a recent survey conducted by PwC shows that 80% of uh, surveyed commercial banks have implemented elements of a sustainable financing policy in their strategies and uh, financial products and almost all of them take into account environmental risks in their lending process. Now, implementing these changes must be challenging as it requires new skills, resources, policies and practices. How are you managing these changes and what key breakthroughs have you noted recently and, and what can we expect more of in the mm -hmm. future? So, uh, yeah, we, we do uh, see some uh, changes already happening. Uh, for this is more from the regulatory side, but yeah. also from inside that we are, uh, let's say, uh, uh, collecting the data uh, according to the European uh, European Banking Authority's uh, guidelines about uh, uh, collecting ESG data from uh, our clients, and uh, this is something that we already have implemented. So now, with every new deal, uh, even with uh, small medium enterprises, we are collecting data about, let's say, their carbon foot footprint strategies, their uh, their environmental impact, yeah. and uh, this is something that is uh, new. And uh, I must say that for our clients, some Sometimes this remains uh, challenging, but we have generally uh, not really received, let's say, some uh, tough feedback. Uh, this was uh, generally understood by our yeah. clients, and I think that this is a big role of uh, financial institutions, not only, of course, of our ins bank, because other banks will or are or are already doing exactly yeah. the same. Uh, that uh, we are collecting these uh, data. And uh, really, we have to show why we do it. And uh, of course, this also requires uh, creating new uh, new IT systems and also new uh, people. So uh, hiring new yeah. people or just uh, transforming the role of, uh, of existing yeah. staff members. So this is really something that, uh, that, that we are working on. And uh, what really helps us with this is uh, also Placing, uh, placing sustainable development at the core of our new strategy and also uh, a new uh, department. We have uh, created a specific uh, uh, area in our bank that is only dedicated to sustainability aspects, so we are not uh, making
making, let's say, sustainability as some add-on for our yeah. product department or communication department, but this is really uh, s uh, an entity on its own. We have our own resources to really push uh, this uh, transition through the bank, and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of that, that yeah. we are realizing this, and uh, this is also something that we are, uh, let's say, uh, presenting to our clients, that this is something that is worth to consider. What's great in this whole movement is that businesses and organizations are pushing each other to become better, faster, and, and it's creating a new level of, of, of uh, competitiveness in, in industries in general. So it's clear that y you guys have n made note of that and are, are uh, taking a, lead, a leading role in, in, uh, in the driving these changes. So uh, what, but from what you're saying, Oscar, we can expect a significant increase in demand for financial products that help drive this mm -hmm. energy transition further in the private, public and commercial sectors. Um, and which products are most popular uh, for each of these client types? Can we expect more favorable or less favorable lending terms in the near future as a result of the growing need for higher energy independence in Europe? So uh, maybe to start more generally, uh, in our company we already uh, provide, let's say, specific incentives also internally in our bank to, let's say, mo uh, motivate our our relationship managers for providing uh, green products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also expanding our, uh, our let's say, array of uh, products that we are offering, starting from uh, from uh, products that are for you or me. So, yeah. for instance, for financing a PV fi uh, photovoltaic installation, we had more than 16,000 uh, of such installations that we uh, could finance uh, last last year, and uh, probably, al although it is quite dependent on on the on the on the regulatory aspect, uh, this this might even further grow or helping with the Clean Air Act uh, financing for the Clean Air Act on a on a commercial basis, but. Uh, uh, something that we are now developing uh, among, uh, let's say, the large companies, enterprises, mm -hmm. is uh, the uh, sustainability linked loan and uh, green loan uh, and uh, green bonds uh, products, a yeah. range of products where this is something that already on Western markets, uh, sustainability linked uh, uh, products are, uh, let's say, domin uh, already dominating the large deals made between uh, uh, banking groups and uh, and uh, large clients, and uh, we only see the first deals in Poland right yeah. now. But uh, we are happy to be on a f as f be front runners in yeah. this area. So um, now the implementation of ESG strategies involves, of course, not only environmental issues but also social ones. Mm -hmm. So what are you currently doing to improve the quality of life for your employees? your individual clients and also in the context of, uh, of, of, of the situation in Ukraine, the, the people of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, with regards to social aspects, uh, we have uh, quite a w wide array of uh, actions and one I'm uh, pretty proud of is that uh, we offer specific, uh, specific uh, days off for doing voluntary action. Oh, and uh, actually tomorrow I'll be taking use of it for uh, uh, supporting our, our, uh, our uh, let's say, our efforts to help people from Ukraine. So right. that is something that is uh, really, uh, it's not a, you know, it's not a big thing on a systemic level, but it really matters and it really makes uh, people within the uh, organization uh, uh, proud of uh, being supportive and also yeah. that uh, their employer is really supporting their efforts in that. And uh, also uh, we are supporting organizations, not only the, let's say, most uh, prominent ones in the Polish uh, sphere of NGOs, but also smaller organizations focused, uh, for instance, on uh, helping migrants, mm -hmm. not only now in the Ukraine crisis, but also before during the uh, crisis on the Polish-Belarusian border. Right. Uh, so Fundacja Alcalenia or such organizations that uh, are uh, dealing with uh, uh, with the problem of depression among mm -hmm. uh, among uh, people in uh, in Poland specifically. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, these are some uh, social actions that we undertake. And with regards to Ukraine, then except of uh, supporting uh, NGOs uh, in Poland that are dealing with this, we also are uh, helping our our colleagues from the Ukrainian. Uh, uh, part of uh, BNP Paribas uh, Bank, and uh, as uh, even by mid-March we already had uh, almost 1,000 people so that we are hosting in, in Poland and this is uh, quite a let's say large uh, organizational challenge but uh, uh, we are also all very happy that that we can uh, contribute to that and uh, we are also even at uh, 
at the highest level we are really dedicated to find a good solution not only of course to uh, to make uh, to put these people in safety yeah. he right here in Poland but also to enable their uh, continuity of work so we are also uh, dedicating uh, resources to you know provide yeah. uh, all the ne things needed for to continuing the operation of this bank because we also all hope that this uh, conflict will uh, just get uh, solved somehow yeah. and that we will be able to get back as much as possible to 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 the uh, to, to back to our let's say daily yeah. business right i think it's clear what has happened is it's uh, drawn a line uh, as to um things that w you know the behaviors that we can uh, adopt and it's shifted how you know how to approach other people how to approach the, the subject of social responsibility mm. in general it's focused everybody's mind on, on, on what's important and it's I'm glad to hear that it, that is mirrored in the world of, of, of business banking and finance as well um, thank you very much Oscar for for the very insightful conversation and I hope we'll be able to uh, speak again soon and to learn more about your activities and for those of you who have any follow-up questions, uh, please get in touch via uh, message on social media or by email at contact at greeneuropetoday.com. I'll promise I'll, I'll pass on your questions straight on to Oskar Kulik. Um, if your business is, in, is active in the field of ESG and has an inspiring story to share, then please get in touch. We would love to host you on one of our shows. Thank you very much for watching and join us again next week. Goodbye.